artist. This is holy ground. Bow yeah. down and worship him. Amen. Bow down and worship Him. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Welcome, my dear brethren, to this teleconference. Another time we are here to give Him praise and glory to God, our Savior and our Redeemer and our friend. We give God thanks for you joining us. From wherever you are, we thank God for you. And we are worshiping God now in the beauty of holiness. Our God is good. Our God is great. He's loving. He's caring, he's merciful, all good things come from God. And so we thank him for, we have a good God, a God that we can praise. And he has done so much for us. He's taken us from a mighty long way. And the fact that we are here today, give him thanks. And you know, when we think about ourselves and that, you know, we have our function, we have our hands, our feet, we have our eyes, we have our ears, we have all our but our body in one in one piece and we have health and strength we have to give God thanks because it could be so different but because of his mercy and because of his grace we are here to give him thanks and we are on the season of parables we're talking about some parables over the last few weeks we're talking about some of the parables, parables that Jesus spoke about when he was here on earth and we know the parable is an earthly story which has a heavenly meaning. And we have been looking at various parables over the last few weeks. Um, we looked at the parable of the farmer and the seeds, sowing seeds. Some fell on stony ground, some fell among thorns, some fell by the wayside. And the only one that was good was the one that fell on good ground. So we covered that topic a few weeks ago, the f that our heart must be susceptible to receive the Word of God. If our heart is not open to receive the Word of God, then we cannot get anywhere. We cannot grow in the Spirit. We cannot be strong in God. But our heart must be receive receptive to the Word of God. And we also had a um, parable of the... Um, the prayer of the prodigal son we had last week, which was telling us about the son who left everything he had, wanted he, what was given to him, wanted his father to divide his portion. And his father divided his portion and gave it to him, and he went away and he blew it on righteous living and all sorts of things, and then he became in want. And good thing that he came back to himself and said, I have, my father have many hired servants, and I perish with hunger. I will go back to him. So he repented. And it's always good to have a repentant heart before God. 
because as we see he went back to his father and his father received him joyfully his father was so glad to see him so now we, we, we have another parable the parable of the wedding garment this is what we are doing today parable of the wedding garment and it's taken from Matthew's chapter 22 well, I'll have a short prayer before we go into the Word. Father, we thank you for everyone that's joined this teleconference. I pray you bless the hearers. I pray you will give us a better understanding of who you are, what you mean to us, and help us to draw nearer to you. We bless you, we praise you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we are going into the, the parable of the wedding garment. The wedding garment garment and it's taken from Matthew chapter 22 from verse 1 to 14 I'm going to read it says and Jesus answered and spake unto them again by a parable and said the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servant to call them that were bidden to the wedding, that they should come. And he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage and they made light of it and went their ways one to his farm another to his merchandise and the remnant took his servant entreat him spitefully and slew him but when the king heard thereof when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. So they took the servant and slew him. When the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his army to destroy those murderers and burn their city. Then said he to his servant, The wedding is ready. But they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you find, bid them to the marriage. So the so servant went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding were furnished with guests and when the king came in to see the guests he saw a man which had not a wedding garment and he said unto him friend how comest thou hither not having a wedding garment and he was speechless He was speechless. Then the king said, then said the king to his servant, bind him, bind him, hand and foot, take him away, cast him into utter darkness, and there will be weeping, gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Now, there's a reason why Jesus gave this parable, the parable of the wedding garment. The significance of this parable, when it says the kingdom of heaven is like a king, so it is telling us what heaven is like. It, so the kingdom of heaven has a king. Though the king of the king of the kingdom is our Lord, 
but this is depicting an early story. So the kingdom of heaven is like a certain man who made a marriage to, for his son and set forth his servant to call them were bidden to the wedding that they should come. So this man in the natural having a wedding for his son, a marriage for his son, call his servant and selected people, call people, selected people to come to the wedding. Maybe people who he knew, people who he was familiar with, he sent his servant to call them, you know, he knows them. So he sent Pacific servants to call Pacific people to come. My son is having a wedding. You, I want you to be my guest. He sent his servant out to tell them and bid them to come to the wedding. He said, I have prepared dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. I have set everything in order. I have prepared everything. All you need to do is to come. Come to the wedding of my son. All things are ready. Come to the marriage. I want my marriage to be furnished by the people who I know, people who I've called. I've called you. Come. But we see in verse 5, they said, Those that were called to the wedding, those who were called to the marriage, they made light of it. it. You know, it's like when God called many, many, when God called many, specifically, by His Word, He used His Word to call us. Many people make very light of it. Oh, I can do it another day. I can do it another time. I'm not ready. This is it. Making light of it. I'm not ready. The Spirit of God said, come. Come now. Now is the time of salvation. But many, they all that were called made light of it. They, they didn't thought it was important. They didn't thought it was a matter of urgency. But whenever God called us, it is a matter of urgency. He said, come now. This is the day of salvation. Come now. God, God need us to come to Him when He call, not to make light of it. So these that were called, these guests that were called, made light of it, and went their way. One to the farm, to his farm. Obviously, he thought his farm was more important than coming to this marriage. Another to his merchandise, the one to his merchandise, thought his merchandise, his whatever wealth he had, he had to look after what his estate, whatever it is, he thought it was more important than coming to the marriage. But it's depicted of people who take light the calling of God. When we get the calling of God, it's not something to take light of. It is a special calling. It is an honorable calling. And God expects when He calls us that we should answer. I was speaking today about Samuel when God wanted to use Samuel and when God had um, Hannah and Penina to there was two wives of Elkina, and then Hannah had no child, but Penina had child. But Hannah needed something from God, and so she reached out to God, and she reached out to God and prayed to God, and God gave her a son. So it's a matter of when we need God. We need God. We have to realize that we need God. We need God in our life. 
Without God, we are nothing. We are insignificant without God. It's only God that makes us what we are or who we are in every case. But they made light of this calling and the, the, remnant, of his, the remnant took his servant and entreated him spitefully and slew him. So the rest that did not come, you see how bad this thing can get. The rest that were called to the wedding, the rest who just turned away, there were some who was even angry, the fact that they were called to the wedding, to the marriage, that they took the servant and treat them spitefully and slew them kill the servant who bought the message who bought the invitation so now look at the fact that we are invited to the great supper the great supper that there will never be another supper like this we are all invited we all are called to this supper Imagine that Jesus is calling us to a great supper. And imagine that we, some turn away to their merchandise, some turn away to their farm, some, and some, in fact, kill the messenger. How awesome that is. So they slew the servants. Some of them entreat them spitefully and slew them. The servant who came from the good man, from the king, the servant that came from the king with an invitation, they entreat them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard, he was wroth, and he sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. You know, this is depleted of God Almighty. This is depleted of God Almighty. If God call us, if God call us, and we make light of His calling, and not only make light of His calling, but the servant who call, like the preachers and the evangelists and the missionaries who go out, and call you to come to Jesus and you as much as abuse them and slew them how do you think God will treat any man who do that not only have they rejected the call to come to God but they have slain the one who bring the message who bring God word how you think God would respond to that but it says the king this is the earthly king. When he heard that his servant who he sent to call his guests was entreated spitefully and, and killed, the king, the Bible says, the king heard it, he was wroth. He was angry. Because imagine that you're having a wedding. Your son is getting married. And you invite your guests to come to the wedding. And they rejected the invitation. And on top of rejecting the invitation, they slew your servants. So it says the king was wroth and he sent his enemy armies and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. There is sometimes... You, when you, when we get called, sometimes people say, "Oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm trying to get ready." But that's the, the, you know, God is patient. He would like you to come now because we are not sure about tomorrow. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised to us. We don't know what this world has in store. You know, we've seen so much natural disasters. We've seen so much wars in every corner of the earth right now. 
and we don't know what is in store for tomorrow but when we get the call let us come to Jesus let us find Jesus let us seek him and let us not take light of this calling and then the servant then said he to his servant the king said to his servant the wedding is ready we can't delay the wedding I'm disamuse my word the wedding is ready and they that were bidden were not worthy the wedding is ready they that were bidden were not worthy they were called but they were not worthy of the calling so the king says to his servant go therefore into the highways and as many as ye find shall find bid them to come to the wed to the marriage go into the highways go out on the street call everyone tell them to come and so we we'll see a time like this when many who were called are not coming but God will send his servant out to call many who were not considered many who were not even were outside of the commonwealth of Israel outside of God's outside of the presence of God God has called them so the servant went into the highways and gathered together as many as they found and the Bible says both bad and good and the wedding was furnished so the servant went out into the highways as the king commanded those people who we think never knew God, never care about God, there shall be a revival what we will be shocked to see that many who never even think, we may not even think they would ever be saved. God will save them. Many who we think are out there have no thoughts of God. God will call them. In due course, God will call them. So the servant went out and gathered together as many as they found to come to the wedding, to come to the marriage. It says both bad and good. Everyone, God called everyone bad and good. We can't be, no one can be too bad that God would not call them. The Bible, the songwriter says, though, the, psalm, the writer says, though your skin, your sin, Though your sin may be as scarlet, he will make them white as wool. No, your sin, though your sin may be as scarlet, he will make them white as wool, white as snow. So you, you, you're never too bad for God. Though your sin may be as crimson, so he called both the bad and the good to the wedding and the wedding was furnished with guests you know it tells us that the kingdom of god is eternity the kingdom of god is eternal when we look at countries who are saying that we have no room for immigrants because our country is full you know and then many con many countries deport immigrants who try to come for a better life or they say our country is full we can't take any more but the kingdom of god cannot be full and there's room for millions more Millions have gone in and there's room for millions more. The kingdom of God cannot be full. 
Yeah, many countries are saying they they, have, they can't take immigrants. Uh, they're full up, but the kingdom of God. So Jesus, the good man says, gather together as many, as many as you can find. Go to the hills, go to the mountain, go to the valley, go to the uttermost part of the earth. Bring, 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 there is room. Bring. And so it says, when the king came in, so the king comes in to see the guests. He saw there was a man which had no wedding garment. So all the guests who came, came from the highways and the byways, from the mountains, from the valleys, all was given a wedding garment. All came in their wedding garment. All received their wedding garment. In the natural way, we would say they were all dressed for the wedding. In the spiritual way, we would say that they were all repented and was accepted and their sins was taken. In the spiritual way, they were spiritually ready for the kingdom of God. Remember we say that the parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Mean that this parable that Jesus spoke was depleted of what heaven is. Everyone who are to enter into heaven must have to have the wedding garment because there shall be a great wedding, the marriage of the Lamb. Jesus who is the groom and the church is the bride. There is going to be a great wedding. There's going to be a great wedding where everyone who are invited will come. But everyone that is invited will come, but they, every man that is invited that come must have their wedding garment. The wedding garment that we, every man, needs to get into the great supper the one that is to come when Jesus comes to take his bride. The wedding garment that every man must have is the righteousness of God. And you get the righteousness of God through repentance. Repentance is the key to having your wedding garment. Repentance and having your sin washed away through baptism and then receiving the Spirit of God without which no man can enter the great the great the great marriage the great supper no man can enter into heaven when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man who had on, who had not a wedding garment. How comes? How did he get in? Nevertheless, the king saw him. There was something that is not right. Maybe he had not repented in the spiritual realm. He maybe not accept Jesus in the spiritual realm. But in the natural realm, he was not fitted with his wedding, with a wedding garment. So we have to realize that we all are invited to the great supper. Every one of us. 
were invited to the Great Supper, the wedding of the Lamb. And if we could just imagine how awesome, how wonderful heaven must be. If we just imagine that wedding of the church and Jesus, who is the groom of the church. If we just imagine the saints all dressed in glorious white. And then you see someone there who is not dressed in white. This is, this cannot be accepted. Some chew the water and some chew the flood, but all under the blood. In the heavenly sphere, we must all go under the blood. The blood of Jesus, which saves us. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. We cannot receive remission from our sin without the shedding of blood. Jesus came to die. Jesus, King of glory, came to earth for no other reason but to die. That was his mission. For his blood to be shed upon the upon Calvary tree, upon the tree that he suffered, he bled and died to give us remission of sin, to set us free from the bondage of sin. Because we have to realize that sin is bondage. Anyone who is under sin is under bondage. We have to break away from sin. We have to break away from unrighteousness. We have to break away from evil. We have to wash in the blood. A songwriter says, wash me in the blood of the Lamb and I shall be whiter than snow. We have to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, in the blood of Jesus. Jesus' blood is the same as it was 2,000 years ago. His blood has never lost its power and it is here to save every man that cometh unto him. He says, no every, no every man that cometh unto me, any man that cometh unto me, I will no wise cast away, I will no wise cast off. So we are invited to the great supper, the great supper, everyone is invited. But let us not be like those who made light of it. Let us not be like those who said, Oh, I have a farm, I have to go. I, I, I can't come, I have a farm, I can't come. I have merchandise, I have my business to look after. I don't have time for church. I don't have time for everything else. As you know, you know we've seen these days, businesses open seven days a week. But we now, you can get anything at all. There's only a few places that are closed on Sundays, but most shops are open on Sundays. If it's a Sunday, it's a normal day. So nobody has time to put away for this king who has invited us all to the wedding. We all, so many, are making excuses make no longer vain excuses because excuses are vain if we realize the calling of god we would not hesitate no one should hesitate the calling of god he's calling one and he's calling all the bible says that god is long-suffering god do not count slackness like some men count slackness. But he's long-suffering to us, Lord. He says, not that any should perish, 
God do not want any man to perish. God do not want anyone to go to hell. Because God know what hell is. God created hell. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Because there's no repentance for angels that sin. We can repent. But the angels that sin cannot repent. Therefore, the angels that sin that were cast out of heaven will go down to perdition, to hell. But we, we can repent. We can reconcile to God through His blood, His blood of reconciliation. That those, what Adam did, the blood of Jesus undo what Adam did because Adam's disobedience to God has put us on a broad road to hell. But Jesus came to turn us away from hell by his blood, to give us salvation, to give us peace, to give us hope, to reunite us, re to reunite us back to God, to take us back to Eden. When God created Adam and Eve Eden, Oh, it was so beautiful. The garden was so beautiful. All the beautiful trees, all the beautiful plants, plants and flowers, everything was beautiful. Everything was in harmony. There was no doubt, there was no fear. It was all so beautiful. And the Bible tells us when God created Adam, put him in the garden, tell him to dress it and to keep it. It wasn't really work. It was just, it was to be at home and to be happy and to be obedient. All God wanted Adam to do is to be obedient. And oh, how great the Bible tells us that God Almighty came down into the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day and he talked with Adam. Oh, what blessed sweet communion. Oh, how awesome it was when Adam was in the garden and they talked to God and how beautiful it was. There was no fear, there was no doubt, there's no, everything was just beautiful. Until Adam disobeyed the commandment of God. And even now, men disobeyed the commandment of God and turn away every precept, every commandment that God has given man, just turn away. And because of that, even though Jesus had died for the world, but unless man reconcile himself through repentance to God, man will perish. Man will perish. Because the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So there is a wages for sin. And there is a gift that God gives to those who repent and come to him, which is life. Sin brings death. And destruction but Jesus said I came Jesus said I came that they may have life 
and more abundantly. Abundant life, that's what Jesus gives us. Life in abundance. Endless life. A life of peace, a life of joy, a life of hope. A life of singing and shouting and praising God. A life which we should we should love we should dream about if the bible says if we be risen with christ we should set our affection on things above if we claim to be children of god we should think about heavenly things because our home is not on this earth we are passing through we are sojourners we are here today and tomorrow we are gone. What is man? Man is like the grass. Is here today and gone tomorrow. But when we are in God, we have life. We have eternal life. We have life of peace and joy. So, in conclusion, this wedding Invitation was sent out to those who the king knew and those servant took the message to those guests that were appointed and they took it so lightly. They did not thought it was important. They did not thought it need their attention. They had better things to do. So it is today when God calls, many turn away and have other things to do. No time for God, no time for church, no time for praying, no time for seeking God, no time, time for everything else. But let us realize that this world has nothing to offer, nothing to offer us. And this this world is full of sin, shame and disgrace. The only peace we have, the only joy we have is in Jesus. So let us seek the Lord while he's near. And if we, if we know the Lord, let us cling close to him. Because the writer says, time clock is striking the hour. Jesus will soon descend. Clothed with his garment of power. Clothed. Clothed with his garment of power. The reign of sin to end. Sin will reign. Evil will remain. The murder, the wars, all that is going on in this world, the immorality. It will end. It will end. And Jesus will give us a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Oh, what a blessed hope we have. What a blessed hope we have. A hope which makes us not ashamed. Brethren, let us be glad in the Lord. Let us rejoice in the Lord because He is good. His love and His mercy endure forever. And I know we are all blessed. We are all blessed. And the, 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 my, my speaking today about Samuel and Hannah and Penina and how God gave Hannah a son. God, Hannah, needed a child, but her womb was closed. And she prayed to God. And she made a covenant with God. Hannah said to God, Hear thy maidservant, and give thy maidservant a man-child and 
I will give thee that child to be forever serving you. And she made a covenant with God. And God opened her womb and gave her a man-child, just as she asked God to do. And she took the child and gave it to Eli the priest. And that child was brought up into the house of God. And we see how God used Samuel. And the message was, the message was, what you want, God wants. What you want, God wants what you want. Because Anna wanted a son and God wanted a prophet. So Anna, Hannah got her son and God got his prophet, which was Samuel. God bless you, brethren. God bless you. Glad to have you here with us tonight. Thank you for joining us. And I'm glad to see our dear Pastor Winston with us again. Bless you, my dear sister Brina, sister PT, my son Delian, and my daughter Andromeda, and, who said, and others who may be here. God bless you. Dear Bishop Winston Johnson, you were there Thank with you. us, sir. God bless you for joining us, sir. Always good to have you. Would like to ask you to just say a few words for us. Always your words of encouragement is welcome. Praise God. Praise God, sir. I want to say a pleasant good afternoon and good evening for those who are looking at POV. I, I truly give God thanks for his goodness and his mercy. The writer quietly penned it. He said, For while we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. Yes. And as we look in and see how the disciples were working as they work as you spoke on the the bridegroom came yes and those who are ready and he was looking at the the supper it says why did the bridegroom tarry they slumber and slept and slept and that we must understand this, that while we wait for the second return, most of us will die. Yes. Most of us will face the end of death. Yes. While the bridegroom tarry, they slumber and slept. And they slept. And so, as it were, many will slept and many go to sleep. Who knows? Our time could be tomorrow. Yes. But the bridegroom is not yet come. No. But our time could be. We could be sleeping. Yes. Rest from our labor. Paul said, look, I show you a mystery. A mystery. The mystery about it, we shall not all sleep. But we shall be changed. So, therefore, some will be alive, and those who already slept, the call will still be positive. Yes. And no grave could hold you, nor held you captive, or slave, or bondage. For the quickening power is able to quicken us and to make us to go to that celestial city. So it's incumbent upon us as we labor. Remember 
the body get tired sometimes. Yes. We become weary sometimes, mm -hmm. preachers. Sometimes we become frustrating sometimes. Yes. It, it, it look like we're not moving and we're not going anywhere. And sometimes it can be very discouraging. Sometimes it's grievous. But we want to be reminded as Jesus told his disciples, if any man will come after yes. me, yes, yes, let him, let him deny himself. himself. Amen and take up his cross, his cross. And so, as we labor in the vineyard, as we labor to the end, be not weary of well doing. in well doing. That's right. For if we faint not a crown of life, mm. We have disappointment many times. People don't believe us. People don't regard us as anything. Yes. But be not dismayed. Thank you, Jesus. Watch here the time. Mm. God will. He will. Not me. He will. God will take care, take care of you. Ministering servants, citizens of the kingdom of Yahweh. Stay focused. Labor for the night cometh. Yes. When no man can work. And soon and very soon, the mist will roll away. When we go say farewell to this world, mm. farewell to sorrow, farewell to the farewell to pain, yes. farewell to trouble. Yes. Farewell to heartache. My God. Farewell, doctor. It is sweet of our prayer. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. May we stay focused. It becomes tiresome as we look at the development of the world and the unfolding. And as I heard you speak quite bluntly, it is. We have no time for church. Mm. Everybody busy finding no time to worship. If you don't have to like you're begging somebody to come to worship, they don't see the necessity. But I encourage us as servants, be encouraged. The race is not for the swift. Nor that they buckle for the, for the strong. That's right. But they who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. God bless you all. And we stay connected and stay within the, the perimeter of the word of God. God bless you. It is the prayer of my heart. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Bishop um, Dr. Johnson from the United States, God bless you. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your words of encouragement. Let us be encouraged, brethren. God is real. God is real and he's, you know, the time is coming. Um, you know, the Bible says time will be no more. Time will not always be. It will not always be. There is coming a time. There is coming a time when there will be no time. There will be no time. So while we have time, let us use our time to glorify God and to be a light unto this world and to bring the message of God that Jesus' blood was shed for us to redeem us, to give us salvation. And it's, it's a good news because when we look what's going on, if we pick the phone up, we pick the computer up, we pick the newspaper up, there's no good news. There is no good news. But we have the good news. The good news is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him 
should not perish, but have everlasting life. So my dear brethren, God bless you all, and may God keep and protect us, guide us along the way as we continue our journey. As our bishop said, uh, tomorrow is not promised, but we have today. So let us use today to give God the praise and to give Him the glory. That's due to His name. Father, we thank You for everyone that has joined tonight. I pray Your presence will be with us. I pray You continue to keep us. I pray You cover us under Your blood. I pray, Lord, Your guidance will be upon us. I pray Your presence will be with us. I pray that you'll open our understanding for us to see you, understand you. Lord God, we know you love us because you have proven your love for us. Help, help us, Lord, to show that love that you showed us, to reciprocate, <laughs> reciprocate the love that you showed us that we may draw near to you. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Touch um, dear Sister Brina, touch Sister P.T., touch my daughter, Ajamida, my son, Delian. God bless. Touch also our dear beloved Pastor Dr. Winston for joining us and anyone else will be on here. Lord, we thank you for everyone. Bless, keep, guide, and protect us. We give you thanks, we give you praise, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all for joining us and we come to the end of our service. God bless and keep you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fulfillment of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, rest, remain and abide with us now and forevermore. Let all the people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.